Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to do possibly the most famous and oldest Lee code problem, to sum. Let's get into it. So we're given an array of integers called nums, and we're given a target integer called target. Our goal is to find indices i and j such that nums of i and nums of j added together are equal to target. So let's take a look at this example list right here. Let's say our target sum is 56, in which case we might try adding the first two numbers together. Since they don't add up to 56, we then try 23 and 14, 23 and 42, and 23 and 61. None of those added up to 56. And so since we've now exhausted all combinations in which the first element is a member of the sum with all the other elements, we then check whether 32 and all the other elements are equal to 56. So we check 32 and 14, 32 and 42, and 32 and 61. Once again, none of those equaled 56. So then we move on to checking 14 with all the other elements. 14 and 42 do actually add up to 56, so we return the indices of 14 and 42. So this works, and you'll probably pass the lead code test cases, but one thing to keep in mind is, once again, this is the most famous problem on lead code, and if this ever came up in an interview, you better make sure that you have a better answer than the first one that came to your mind. This runtime is actually quadratic. Why? Well, the number of iterations we have is n minus 1 plus n minus 2 all the way down to 1, right? Because we had n minus 1 iterations when we were checking 23, and we had n minus 2 iterations when we were checking 32. It turns out that this simplifies nicely into a well-defined equation, which you can verify as an exercise, and this is roughly n squared. So can we do better than n squared? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Here's one approach. We first iterate through the array and populate this hash map, mapping each element to its index in the array. We can then iterate a second time through the array, and for each element, we check whether its complement exists in the hash map. For example, we can check if 56 minus 23 exists in the hash map. 56 minus 23 is 33. If 33 existed in the map, that means that we have 23 and 33 both in the list, and 23 and 33 added together is equal to 56. But 33 does not exist in our hash map, so we move on. 56 minus 32 also doesn't exist in the hash map. But what about 56 minus 14? Yes, in fact, 56 minus 14 does exist. It's 42. And so since we're currently at index 2, and 42 maps to index 3, then we return indices 2 and 3 in linear time. Since we only made two linear passes over the array, and putting and getting elements from the hash map happen in constant time. So this is a step in the right direction. But once again, we ask ourselves, can we do better? And once again, the answer is, yes, we can. Yes, we can. So remember that the complements are the key to finding the answer. But one thing you may not have noticed is that we actually don't need a first pass to pre-populate the hash map. We can actually both populate the hash map and check for the complement on the first pass. Let's see how that might work. Initially, the hash map would be empty, and we'd see if 56 minus 23 is a key. It's not, so we move on. Now the map is populated with 23, mapping to its index 0, and we check if the next element's complement is in the map. 56 minus 32 is not in the map, so we move on. Now we have both 23 and 32 mapped to their indices in the map. 56 minus 14 is also not in the map, so we put 14 mapped to its index, and then we check 42. Now on 42, we can see that 56 minus 42 is indeed in the map, 14. So now we can return indices 3 and 2. Alrighty, so that was conceptually how we do this. Now let's jump into the code. So firstly, we'll define an empty dictionary and set up our index i to be 0. We'll iterate through the array and get the current element as well as its complement. If the complement exists in the map, like we said, we'll return the current index as well as the index of the complement. Otherwise, we populate the map with the current element and set its value to the current index. And then we increment the index. 
since we're told in the problem description that we are guaranteed to find a pair, we don't really need to put anything out here. Yep, and that's how you work from the naive to some solution to one that your interviewer would accept. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.